So here's the thing. I'm trying to become a developer this year. There's a ton of layoffs going on, so it can be a little unnerving sometimes. There's a lot of people that are going to be looking for tech jobs in the coming months and probably in the next couple of years as well. On top of that, there's a lot of pressure from stakeholders in a lot of companies to lean out workflows and make processes lighter weight, faster, and less labor intensive, which means that there's going to be less and less hiring as things go on. This is for a couple of reasons. I mean, money isn't being printed as much as it was this time last year, which means that excess programs need to be cut and the programs that do exist need to be made more efficient. On that note, actually, Mark Zuckerberg specifically has dubbed 2023 the year of efficiency, um, which is a cute way of saying that he's decided to lay off an additional 10,000 people, making the total layoffs in Meta uh, about 22,000 people so far this year, if I'm not mistaken. It's not necessarily his fault, though. I mean, like I said, money's been extremely cheap the last few years. So I think a lot of tech companies really thought that this money machine would just keep going forever. And they built their projections and their hiring structures based off of that idea, that assumption that uh, money would keep being cheap and would keep getting printed for the foreseeable future. So these companies overhired because of that. And as soon as there was any sign of the market reversing, they had to backtrack. Speaking of the Zuck, he mentioned something kind of interesting back in November of 2022 when he made the first round of layoffs. He said that in addition to the layoffs, their hiring freezes would continue, quote, with few exceptions. Today, we're going to talk about how to be one of those exceptions, why simply applying for a job is no longer enough, and what you can do to stand out as a great candidate amongst a sea of competition. So what does he mean by with few exceptions? He might mean that there's some programs that he's looking to expand on, but I think what's more likely is literally what he said. He's literally holding out potential for hiring for an exceptional reason or hiring an exceptional candidate. Let's take a second to think about how the job process works in general. If you go right now to LinkedIn and search for jobs in web development, on first impression, the competition seems staggering because it is. When you navigate and search for these jobs, it doesn't take long to see that a lot of web developer jobs that are posted even in fixed office locations have as much as 600 or more applicants within just a few hours of that job being posted. How the hell are you supposed to compete with 600 applicants, even as an experienced developer? Well, the first point that I have to make is actually good news, and it's that most of these applications are just throwaways. In fact, LinkedIn has a easy apply option with a lot of their jobs. And um, let's see how fast it takes for us to apply to one of these jobs. All right, start the timer. Let's get this right here. Go to web developer jobs. Uh, we have our first one with easy apply. We'll go here. That's all my info, which will be blurred out. We'll put that one, choose, review, and boom. There we go. I'm not going to submit this one because I don't want to, <laughs> but uh, I think you get the point. That's what a lot of people are doing to apply for this job, and that's where it ends. Almost zero effort and extremely low time commitment. I mean, it takes a minute or less to apply for some of these jobs if you already have your resume uploaded. I could do 200 of these a day with no problem if I wanted to. It's extremely impersonal. Another problem, and this may or may not apply to you, but for me, a problem is that I need to be able to navigate past HR filters. You may, but I don't have a college degree. So I'm kind of lacking in that regard. When a algorithm looks at my resume, it oftentimes will just filter me out before a human can even see my application because I don't have a bachelor's degree or a master's degree. It's not a problem because an HR person is seeing my application or my resume and being able to fully analyze whether or not I'd be a good candidate. It's because literally these sites like LinkedIn and ZipRecruiter have resume filters that just put your resume into an algorithm and determine whether or not you are a fit for the job based on your educational levels. So we got two major problems here. The first one is on the employer side and it's that the process of getting to know an applicant is extremely impersonal. These HR filters exclude you from the running before you even have a chance to make a human impression on anyone. And the second problem is that they're extremely low effort on the applicant side. So you can just on a Sunday, if you wanted to submit a ton of applications, make it extremely impersonal and just shotgun a ton of applications out in one go in just a few hours. And so the commitment for applying to these jobs is zero to none, essentially. Zero to none? Yeah, that's right. 
That sounded smart, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. So there's an easy solution to this. We just need to put in more effort than the majority of people that are just going through LinkedIn quick apply and shotgunning applications. In other words, we need to make the application process more human and higher effort. And the great news is that you can have a say in both of these factors. The first thing we need to solve is the human side. So like I said before, if you enter an application onto LinkedIn, and especially if you're in my position and you don't have a college degree, these site filters are simply gonna throw out my application before a human ever gets to see them. I mean, it's literally inhuman. I don't know if it's inhumane, but it's definitely inhuman. Ahumanistic, something like that. It's the least human way to apply. Now, I'm not saying you should forego this process completely. I mean, it's a good way to get your data into this company's CRM. And as far as I know, or I would assume that there's some archiving on the back end so that when these filtered resumes are thrown out, they're at least stored somewhere that can be looked into by a hiring manager. You guys might know more about that, so let me know if you do. But I would argue that if all you have time to do in your job searching process is fill out these applications and call it good from there, don't even bother doing it at all. I either reprioritize what you're spending your time doing or come up with another time when you can actually put some effort into the application process. Instead of doing this extremely simple task and calling it good at that, we literally just need to take it a step or two farther than everyone else is. If you find a position at a company you want to apply for, head over to LinkedIn and find people that are working at that company. Reach out to them specifically, whether it's an employee in the department you wanna work for or a hiring manager that might have a say in whether or not you get a position there. You need to be making a human connection with somebody. And it's not a terrible way to potentially get referrals. Now, don't go cold emailing a ton of people just asking straight up for referrals, but start a bunch of open conversations with people at companies that you're interested in working at, try to make that human connection. Hopefully the company that you're applying for has some connection to what you're interested in doing in life. If you're into fitness like I am, you should be applying to nutrition companies, uh, gym-based CRM companies, things like this. That can go for whatever. If you're into small business, maybe you should look at getting a job uh, at Jobber or at um, I think a lot about CRMs because I have a big background with them, but there's a ton of things that you can do to align your interests with the position that you're looking for. And you need to figure out how to align your interests with the interests of the company and the interests of your peers at that company so you can dial in your communication with the current employees and hiring managers at that company and maximize your ability to get a high quality referral from one or many of them then it doesn't matter if you have a bachelor's degree or not. I mean, it might eventually, but you're going to get your foot in the door way faster than if you just shotgunned an application to ABC Nutrition. One really practical tip about LinkedIn specifically is if you are not um, extremely, if you're okay with being a little bit uncomfortable or you are comfortable on camera, you can send video on LinkedIn too. So instead of sending a cold message, you can send a video of yourself talking and just say what's up and make that human connection right away. Have them see your face, have them hear your voice, your inflection, et cetera, so you can truly express your interest in that company. Additionally, if you have a company that you're really shooting to get into and you're willing to invest a reasonable amount of time into it, Go to their website or application, try to find a bug or a feature that could be updated or made better, and make a slide deck on that specific component of their website or of their application. Make a slide deck of what the problem is or what the update could be, how it would impact the company, and the benefit financially or otherwise that the customers and the company that you want to work for would get from that improvement. You don't have to be able to perfectly execute on this if they hire you necessarily, but just being able to critically look at a piece of developed code or um, something in their front end that is obviously or not so obviously badly configured. You know, I was on a website the other day that I'm interested in and I noticed I have a really wide monitor and as soon as you scroll out the size of the page beyond, I don't know, 22 inches, there's padding errors and margin issues on the sides of the page. And that's, you know, maybe most of their visitors are mobile visitors or on a laptop or a small screen. But for the small percentage of people that are on a large screen, that's going to be an issue. They're going to have interface issues with that. So I documented that. I took screenshots. I kind of opened up the HTML in the inspect uh 
tab on my browser and tried to isolate where the issue was going. And I sent all of that documentation in an email to their QA department, which I was able to find online. And, you know, I, I didn't ask for a job when I was doing that. I, I wasn't soliciting for a position necessarily, but I got a response. It was positive and they said that they would take care of it. I haven't checked yet to see if they did, but they, they may have, but it doesn't matter. That would be a huge benefit to a company if you were to send in an application and immediately have that documented issue that you maybe have a proposed solution to. I can show value right up front. Doing these two things is going to put you in at least the top 5% of applicants. So that's being pretty conservative. I think maybe 2 or 3% of applicants are going this far into trying to make an impression on any given company. This kills two birds with one stone as well. They make your outreach very personal and very human. If you showcase an issue you think could be fixed and how you would go about it, along with sending a video um, either on LinkedIn or as a loom with your face and voice, they're instantly making a human connection with whoever receives it. Second, you're showing that you have a high commitment to take the time to consider what you can bring to the table in your application process. And you show that you are a high quality candidate that cares about the product and how it works and that you have ideas for solutions to common issues that these companies are going to have. Okay, so here's just a quick visualization of what all that looks like. On this uh, axis, we have impersonal and dehumanized to extremely personal and human. On this one, we have low effort to no commitment and high effort, high commitment. If we just reach out on LinkedIn, we are at the bottom of this in basically both regards. Like we have a picture of ourselves when we submit that application, but that used in tandem with reaching out to people on LinkedIn that work for the specific company that we want to work for and trying to make that human connection, we get a little bit of a more of a step up. Now, if we find an issue in the code or in a user interface or user experience that we can at minimum just document the issue and point to what could be fixed about it, we're going to put ourselves quite a bit ahead of most people show that we have a high effort and commitment to the application process. And if we put a loom into an email that documents all of this, we're making things extremely personal. This will be kind of like here, actually. We're making things extremely personal and extremely high commitment, high effort. This all in tandem is going to be like a four-step process that you could integrate to make it extremely personal. And there's things that you could do to make it even more personal or add your personal touch to it. This is just kind of the way that I'm going to be going when I start soliciting people for referrals or trying to get my foot in the door for that first developer position. That's it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this. Most of you aren't. It's like 95% of you aren't subscribed, which is fine. There's only 45 of you anyways. But yeah, guys, if you guys like this and you're looking to become a developer or make your life better in 2023, that's exactly what I'm doing. So join along and I'll see you in the next one.